Okay. So now we talk about page replacement. What if there is no frame? What if there is no free frame? There is no free frame. We do a page replacement. Uh, and the page replacement, we talked about the dirty bit that will, uh, you know, for a, the page that we are replacing or the frame that we are replacing, we copy it to disk only if it's dirty, if it got modified since it got loaded. Uh, the basic idea here is first the system is going to look for a free frame. There is a free frame, no problem. Use the free frame. There is no free frame use one of the policies that we are about to study in order to identify a victim frame and that victim will get uh, copied to disk only if it's dirty if it's not dirty we don't have to copy it we we'll just load the page the new page into the frame and then we will restart the process that ran into a page fault okay so here we have uh, you know, two different pages. One is not was is not in physical memory; it's invalid, and one is valid. And the program is accessing this, and it's invalid, so there is a page fault. Uh, the operating system looks for a free frame; it doesn't find <coughs> a free frame. It will have to pick a victim. And assuming that in this case it picked up this as a victim, so if this is the victim, it will copy it to disk only if it's dirty then it will load the new page into the same frame okay and then it will it must change the i and the v so now the page that was invalid is now valid and the one that was valid is now invalid because we did a replacement okay so let's look into page replacement policies and we will study page replacement policies using this example. So this string is a reference string. So it's just a sequence of pages. We assume that the program is accessing these pages. We don't care about the offsets within the pages, right? Because we are working at the page level. Our work at this point is at the page level. Uh, so our references from page replacement point of view is abstracted by the page number. Uh, and what we would expect is if we have more frames available, we will have fewer page faults, right? Because, why? Because with more frames, there will be less replacement. Right? In fact, in the extreme case, if we have enough frames for all the processes, then we will never do any replacement. And, which is an extreme case. We know we'll never do any replacement, which means that the page, once loaded into memory, it will never get replaced, if we have a sufficient number of frames. That's the extreme case. But in, in reality, it's just, we will not have enough frames. Uh, but more frames, having more frames will result in fewer page faults. So let's look first into the first in, first out replacement policy. Yeah. Does that have more memory equal more frames? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. More frames means more memory. So it's just, you know, what's a frame? So you just divide your available memory into frames. So if, if I give you one gigabyte, one gigabyte of memory, and your page size is 1K, one kilobyte. So you'll just divide this into, so this is 10 power nine, this is 10 power three. So you'll divide this into a million frames. You have a million frames. Question. Yes. So is physical memory was as big as disk, would this eliminate page faults completely? Is that what you were saying earlier? And not as big as the disk, but as big as the demand, you know, what we don't care about, you know, we care about the demand of the processes. You know, the total size or the sum of the sizes of the logical address spaces of the processes. If, if, if we have enough physical memory, like if you have three processes and 
you know, each process needs a thousand frames, and you have three thousand frames, then there will be no replacement. Okay, so let's look into first in, first out. So in this case, the program will first access page seven. So we have three frames, and we have eight pages from zero to seven. The program first accesses page seven, it gets loaded into, uh, into physical memory. So that's a page fault still, but there is no replacement. Page fault because seven was not in physical memory. Then it accesses zero, and it gets loaded into physical memory. Then it accesses one, and it gets loaded into physical memory. So, so far we had three page faults that resulted in loading pages from this, but no replacement yet. When will we need a replacement? When we access the next page, which is page two. Page two is not in physical memory, and all three frames are used. Now, the three, the three frames that we have are all used. So now we must replace one of them in order to load the two. Now, which one should we replace? First in, first out. So we replace the first in. So which one of these was first in? Seven. Seven, seven was first in, so we just replace. 7. So 2 replaces 7. So now 7 is no longer in physical memory. Then the next page access is to page 0. But page 0 is already in physical memory. So there is no page fault at all. So there's nothing that we, we, we need to do. Page 0 is already in physical memory. Then the program accesses page 3. Page 3 is not in physical memory. We need to load it. But all frames are used. So we need a replacement. Replacement is first in. Which was first in among these three? Zero. Zero. Zero was first in. So we replace, three replaces zero. And so forth. Now this scheme will result in 15 page faults. If you continue on. By the way, this is something that you will be implementing in the next programming assignment. So the the next and last programming assignment will be on page replacement, and you will be implementing these uh, different policies that we are studying here. So you're going to have the assignment due before the final? Yeah, okay. but it's a minor assignment. So okay. I, will, uh, you know, I will post it tonight, and you will have until the last day of classes. But it's a minor assignment, so it shouldn't take more than a few hours of, of work, maybe a couple of hours if you are a very good programmer. Um, but it's minor, it's not as major as the, you know, the CPU uh, assignment. Uh, oh. so, in, so obviously first in, first out gave lots of page faults. And it's obviously not the best strategy because it doesn't take into account how, uh, how frequently a page is uh, referenced. So when we victimize a page, we would like to victimize a page that is unlikely to be used in the future. And, uh, and that's why the next replacement policy, which is the optimal replacement policy, will look into the future and it will replace the page that will not be needed for the longest time in the future. Now before we move into that, we we'll talk about Benady's anomaly. We just point out that this replacement algorithm uh, exhibits an anomaly where why you may increase the number of frames. So in this case, we may increase the number of frames to four, from three to four, and get more page faults because of the nature of this algorithm. And this was pointed out by Bellady, who, who gave an, an example where increasing page uh, number of frames can give more page faults. So this is the anomaly. Ideally, you know, we would like to see the number of page faults dropping as we increase the number of frames. But with this uh, algorithm, this is not the case. Now with optimal, the optimal algorithm and the other algorithm that we will be studying, we will not have this anomaly. Now the optimal algorithm, applying it to the same example, so first we load z 7, 0, and 1, then we reference 2, now, to find a replacement, we look into the future. Now, we have seven, zero, and one. Which one will be used 
the farthest in the future. So zero will be used very soon, and one will be used uh, later, but sooner than seven. Seven is the latest in the future, right? So we look into the future and we find the frame that will not be used for the longest period of time in the future, and that's seven in this case. So two replaces seven. Then we reference zero and there is no page fault. Then we reference three. Now we look at two, zero, and one. Which one will not be used for the longest time in the future? <coughs> so zero will be used next. Two will be used very soon. And one will not be used for a long time. So three will replace one. So this is definitely optimal because it will replace the page that will not be used for the longest time in the future. Now, the question is, is this a realistic algorithm? No. no. Why not? I can't see into the future necessarily. Yeah, because the operating system is not magic. It doesn't know the future. You know, the operating system is an intelligent program, but it doesn't know the future. Uh, so. It, but we have seen a similar concept in CPU scale, where the operating system needs to know the future, but it doesn't know the future. And what was the solution? Predicts. Yes, yeah, predicting the future based on history. history. So using the past to predict the future. And that's exactly the idea behind the next algorithm, which is the least recently used algorithm. The least recently used it looks into the past because it knows the past. The system can track the past, even though it's non-trivial, by the way, in terms of implementation. We will see it's not that easy. But it will look into the past, and it will say the page that, has, that hasn't been used for the longest time is the page that is the least likely to be used in the future. Yeah? With this scheme, um, there's a possibility that each time you scan, um, whatever you're looking for might be on the closer to the end of your reference string. So doesn't that make it impractical because of the scan time? But each no, in fact, it's impractical because you don't even know the future. So, you know, we have this nice example and I can just look into the future on this slide and everything. But in a real operating system, the oper a real operating system doesn't have these numbers. It doesn't know the future. <coughs> this is something that hasn't happened yet. So, yeah. Uh, were, it, was he done? Were you done? Okay. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, this is considered temp temporal because we're going to look at the past, and so we're dealing with adjacency in time. Uh, well, it's uh, yeah. So we are we are using the yeah locality of reference. It's something that is yes. It's uh, uh, we are implying you know, temporal locality, yes. Because we are saying that, um, you know, this is the, this is now, this is the present, and this is the past, <coughs> and this is the future. And we have like, you know, page one, page two, page three. So we are saying page three, uh, you know, that's a good point. Page 3 was the most recently used, so it's likely to be used in the near future.